Up today on the channel, we're flipping the script a little bit and I'm gonna show you some things from current events and news while giving you a dermatology breakdown. I know that sounds maybe not as cool as pimple popping, but I promise there's some good information here, so stay tuned for the first video. In New York City, a deadly outbreak of Legionnaire's disease. We have just learned at least three patients have now died nearly. Legionnaire's disease is a common problem in poorly maintained cooling systems. This bacteria gets into these cooling systems. It lives readily in water, and then it gets distributed all over. It can happen inside hospitals. It can happen inside large buildings where these big cooling towers sit on top. And it is a very deadly disease, especially if you're immunocompromised. So you've got to be cautious when you're in environments like that. Some of these people maybe could have been saved by wearing masks more but it is a very challenging condition to treat if it is caught, so it's up to the public health officials and the building maintenance officials to make sure that these AC units and other things like that are being well maintained and not having standing water building up inside of them. My face before pregnancy, she looks beautiful, glass skin, and what happened? This is acne fulminans. This is intense inflammation of the sebaceous glands, and this rarely happens in pregnancy. I don't want you to think that it's common, but even after delivery, her skin improves remarkably, but the texture is not quite the same as it was before pregnancy. So this is incredibly rare, and it's difficult to predict who might be at risk for it. If you start to notice severe changes to your skin in pregnancy, the faster that you can go see a dermatologist, the better, because there are things that can be done safely in pregnancy. Obviously, we can't do things like Accutane, but topical azelaic acid can be helpful. And depending on the stage of pregnancy that you're at, sometimes we may even use systemic steroids to help shut down the risk of scarring. Everything is a risk and benefit ratio, so dermatologists like myself will work with OBGYNs to determine the best treatment course for someone, and I know that it's easier said than done, but the result of having a beautiful child delivered is worth it. It's not my skin, so it's easy for me to say that, but she's had significant improvement in her skin after delivery, and there are now treatments that she can do that she couldn't do in pregnancy to help get her skin back to normal. When you've been working in healthcare so long, it starts to feel like this is a normal conversation. So unfortunately, sometimes patients don't like us very much. It depends on what specialty you're in. If you're in the emergency room, you probably get more people that are angry at you than you do in dermatology. One of the reasons that I picked dermatology is because I was shadowing a dermatologist in college and I said, why did you pick dermatology? And he said, well, I've never met an unhappy dermatologist. The patients that we see are usually happy and that makes it a lot easier to come to work every day. Now, I'm not a big fan of videos that poke fun at patients and I have to admit that I haven't always held that line, especially earlier in my social media career. So this is not my favorite kind of video, but Dr. Sood often does put out good information and this is likely just for entertainment purposes. What do you guys think about these kind of videos? When you hear your coworker fighting insurance prior authorizations, it does feel like that sometimes. In medicine, we're trying to provide the best care and the right medication choices for our patients. And sometimes the insurance companies just say, no, we're not gonna do that. It's almost like they're practicing medicine without a license and controlling what we can recommend to a patient. They do it without any liability and we have to then manage the risks and the complications from what may be an inferior medicine for the patient's condition. Prior authorizations take hours and hours of work in my clinic every single day and it's so frustrating because we don't get compensated for that time. I can't bill the patient more and I can't bill the insurance company more for spending hours of time fighting to get a medicine approved for a patient. So what can you do if you are facing prior authorizations and your doctor and their team are going to bat for you, a simple thank you goes a long way. Expressing that appreciation, if we're able to get you on the medicine that we were recommending for you from the get-go, that little appreciation, vote of gratitude, helps us a lot. My name is Jenna. I'm 22. What is going on here? The past two months, I've been suffering from an incredibly rare form of soft tissue cancer called dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans, also known as DFSP. DFSP, dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans. But I've really only touched on the medical side of cancer, and I wanted to touch a little bit on how cancer has affected me mentally. Everybody who deals with cancer deals with it differently. Whether you've personally suffered from cancer, or a friend, family, or loved one who suffered from cancer, your 
journey and your feelings are completely valid. So I highly encourage you to go to her page and watch her talk about her journey with cancer. DFSP or dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans is a malignant tumor that can occur in the skin. It is generally very slow growing, but it has little fingers it sends out all over in the local area. So it's very hard to cut out and get clear margins on it. She describes how she went into a plastic surgeon to have what she thought was a cyst removed from her forehead. After having it removed, she got three stitches put in, and then she got a call while she was on spring break that the lesion actually came back as a very rare type of cancer, that DFSP. She didn't know if this was life-threatening, and thankfully, usually DFSP is not. She's now gone through two surgeries, and she's preparing for a third surgery just to go back and make sure they've got clear margins. This thing on her forehead is called a bolster. This is a dressing that's actually sutured onto her skin because if we were to remove that and look underneath, we'd probably be looking at the muscle, the frontalis muscle, or maybe even her skull bone. She's probably gonna need significant reconstructive surgery so that she can have a skin graft put on there once they know that there's clear margins. DFSP is best treated by a Mohs micrographic surgeon who can process that tissue in real time and hopefully limit the number of procedures that somebody has to go through. Certain types of DFSP can be metastatic, meaning they can travel inside the body. And there's a specific mutation that they may have. And if your DFSP has that mutation, there are systemic chemotherapy or immunotherapy medications that can essentially turn that switch off and help your body to fight the cancer better. And this is exactly why I recommend if you're having a cyst removed or even something as simple as what looks like a skin tag, always have it tested by pathology. You as a patient should never be content to let a doctor cut something off of you and throw it in the garbage can. Because if they had done that on this spot and not had it tested with pathology, this would have recurred and it would have been even bigger than it looks right now. So if you're having something removed, do it at a place that will make sure that it's tested by a pathologist. If you're not willing to pay for pathology testing, you should not have something removed. A pregnancy symptom I did not expect. What is it? Skin tags. Yes. Skin tags can definitely happen in pregnancy. Your body is going through so many changes. There's a lot of hormonal fluctuations. Some people who are pregnant experience higher levels of insulin. They may have gestational diabetes. And when your insulin goes up, you're gonna get skin tags. It's just a fact. People who are diabetic have a lot higher risk of getting skin tags. Even if you're not diabetic in pregnancy, the changes in hormones and growth factors that are happening inside the body can cause skin tags to pop up. These can be easily treated. After delivery, I generally don't do anything cosmetic on somebody when they are pregnant, but after pregnancy, these are pretty easy to remedy. Just know if you're gonna get pregnant, this is a small risk. It doesn't happen to everybody, but some people do get skin tags. You're at a derm appointment and the nurse gives you an open back gown, but you didn't wear the proper underwear because they thought you were just gonna get your face checked. All right, here's the truth. When you're coming to a dermatologist appointment, we usually do give you a gown that you can open at the back. Now, this is totally normal for us, but I get that if you've never had one before, it could be kind of an awkward experience. The reality is we don't care what kind of underwear you are or aren't wearing. I have people that come in and they tell me, I forgot to wear underwear today. I honestly don't know how that happens and I'd be fine if they just told me, I go commando all the time, so I don't have underwear. Doesn't matter to me. But it's just skin to us and our priority is making sure that you don't have anything on your skin that could kill you. So regardless of the kind of underwear you're wearing, whether you've shaved your legs or not, whether you showered that morning, whether you haven't washed your hair in a week, whether you're wearing makeup, whether you're not wearing makeup, come in and just let us check your skin because we are concerned about your health. And yeah, you might feel awkward in that moment, but we're gonna do our best to immediately put you at ease, keep you decent, keep you covered, keep you modest, and only expose those areas one at a time that we need to check. So. We're never just removing the gown completely from somebody and checking all over. We wanna keep you comfortable and just know that your health is our priority and we'll do our best to keep you comfortable. If I had a dollar for every time I heard monkey pox, what is on her skin? Well, this is not monkey pox. This is something called 
a neurofibroma. She likely has a condition called neurofibromatosis type 1, which causes these nerves to grow extra tissue around them. It's the covering of the nerves that can go wild and grow, and it creates all of these fleshy, rubbery-like growths on the skin. And it is a genetic condition. It's not due to sun exposure. It's not due to diet. It is something that happens because of a specific genetic mutation in the skin. And when these get large or painful or occur in cosmetically sensitive areas, they can be removed. And if they're painful, that is something that we bill insurance for. Sometimes they're just cosmetic. People with neurofibromatosis are at higher risk of certain things happening inside the body and may be at higher risk for certain types of brain tumors. So they should be followed regularly to make sure they're not experiencing any complications inside the body because neurofibromatosis, although it's very visible on the skin, also has problems that can happen inside the body. Me as a provider arguing with insurance companies about a medication that my patients need. So yes. It feels like this. When we're talking to insurance companies and they're refusing to provide coverage for a medication and they're telling us to use something, sometimes that's not even FDA approved. It's not clocking to you. I'm standing on business. I'm fighting for my patient. I want them to get the best care possible and you as the insurance company are standing in the way. Get out of the way. Let us provide care. Maybe you don't need to make $40 billion this year and you can actually just take care of the people that you're supposed to be taking care of. My two cents on the topic. Do you have any medical conditions? No. Do you take any medications? Metformin. For my diabetes. Unfortunately, this is something that happens in the clinic and what you need to understand is that if you're taking a medication and it's completely controlling the condition, you still technically have the condition because if you didn't have the medication, you might have the condition. And so sometimes when I ask a patient if they have high blood pressure, they say no, but they're on three medicines for blood pressure. And to them, their blood pressure is normal. So I understand when they say, I don't have high blood pressure or I don't have diabetes because they're on therapy that is controlling it. I hope that this isn't done in a way that's making fun of patients, but just helping us understand that sometimes doctors and patients are almost speaking a different language. And if we don't take time to understand each other, that's when medical errors can happen. And that's when the charting may not be done accurately, especially if doctors don't communicate to other doctors on that patient's care team. So if you have a medication that you take and it's completely controlling your cholesterol, your blood pressure, your diabetes, you should still definitely disclose that you have that condition because it will impact the care that we're trying to provide to you. All right, she's got a small spot on her lip and she's trying to scrape it off. This is a tiny little red spot. And now it's bleeding like crazy. So what the heck is this? This is probably something called a pyogenic granuloma. A pyogenic granuloma or a PG can occur when you get an injury to the skin and the skin heals with way too many blood vessels. It just goes crazy and produces hundreds of tiny capillaries in the skin. And if you traumatize it, it will bleed almost endlessly. I mean, all bleeding stops eventually. I love to use that joke with my patients. Pyogenic granulomas are something that we can easily treat in dermatology. We usually numb the patient up, remove the top of it, and cauterize the base to destroy those extra blood vessels. People who are pregnant have a higher risk of getting extra pyogenic granulomas because they have hormones circulating through their body to promote more blood vessel growth to help the fetus. And they have a larger volume of blood in their body because some of that has to go and help feed the uterus and that fetus. So pregnancy increases your risk of pyogenic granuloma. Certain medications like Accutane can increase your risk of getting a pyogenic granuloma. And if you have one, hold pressure until the bleeding stops and go see a dermatologist. Here we're using a pulse dyed laser to treat blood vessels. Watch that one right there in the middle as they zap, boom, completely gone. The next one, boom, completely gone. This is likely a pulse dye laser. It targets hemoglobin. So all the little red blood cells that are running through those arteries and veins on the skin, when you fire the laser, it heats up the hemoglobin so quickly 
that those little red blood cells can explode and they damage the lining of the blood vessel so that heat and the blood vessel just completely collapses and goes away permanently. If you have rosacea or you've developed extra blood vessels around the nose or the sides of the face, laser treatment with a pulse dye laser or another vascular laser is gonna be the most effective way to get rid of them permanently. This is not something that creams, lotions, and serums will adequately treat. Guys, thank you for watching. I know we got a little bit of reactions in there, but also some other good education. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know your feedback about these kind of videos down in the comments. And if you guys wanna get a free skincare guide, I'm gonna have a link to my email list down in the video description. When you sign up, I will send you over a link to my free skincare guide that I've written to help you understand the ingredients and the products that you should be using in your skincare routine. So check that out and let me know what you think. I'll catch you guys on the next video.